That right there is called a Shang Tangle. <laughs> okay, let's go for a walk. I got I get this question ever so often, especially with new subscribers, and I haven't talked about it in a while. So. How does the cutter know what to cut? Okay. Because somebody uh, made a comment, well, there's a lot of big trees standing. So let me explain real quick. He gets a piece of paper. The cutter gets the contract. In the contract states what trees are supposed to be cut, what, what trees are supposed to be cut. Then he cuts those trees. Um, it'd be difficult for me because I've never ran Buncher much. I ran it for about 10 minutes one day and I had five guys laughing at me. Um, that's another story. But so when we go to a job, like, like a nice single maple right there and uh, you got some nice white oak. There's a red oak over there, a big white oak back there. There was no oak cut in this contract. Um, just like a general contract, what we mostly do is um, we'll cut the clump maple, which is where like multiple trees grow out of one. I explained that a little bit in that ash video. We'll cut the clump maple all of the ash, um, the birch sometimes, sometimes people want it left, sometimes they want it cut, all the popple and all the cherry. And then they usually want the basswood cut, cottonwood, stuff like that, less desirable stuff. And then say, normally it's like eight inches in bigger maple. So. That's why you look around and there's these smaller maples standing. See? And nice single maple trees. So we're leaving those grow. And that oak over there, single. A little bit of an oak patch with some maple mixed in there. We'll leave all those alone. And so if you see a big tree, you're like, why didn't he cut that? Well, because that's a white oak. We didn't cut that. We don't deal with pine. Um, very seldom do we deal with pine. So I just thought I'd go for a walk and explain why there's certain trees left. There's a nice little cherry over there standing. But that's how the cutter knows what to cut. Um, he's done this for a long time and he's one of the best. The second problem is, well, the only problem is, is he won't let me record him. And I have a lot of people ask, show more Buncher videos. If he'd let me record him, I'd record him all the time. Because he is one of the best around. And I've seen other cutters in our area. They don't compare. He's one of the best. Uh, so, that's what we're dealing with there. Um, he gets a contract. He goes in there and he cuts what's on the contract. That's just how it goes. They don't have to mark any trees. Um, he can. He knows the size of the trees from doing it for years and years and years and years and years. And that's how that works. The second coolest thing about this job, I didn't explain this to anybody. Mike cut this 30 years ago. 30 years ago, Mike cut this exact piece of land. Um, so I get a, a lot of questions on how long does it take before you can cut that again? How long does it take before you'll be able to cut that again? And that's a loaded question because it depends on who's cutting it and what they're looking for. As far as we go, I can chip wood like that all day long. That small aspen there, that small popple there. 
I can chip it all day long. Somebody that's cutting bigger timber, whether you go to logger wade, uh, people that's cutting grade veneer all day long, it's going to take them a lot longer to cut this job. Um, that, that's why the oaks are still left out there to grow and the single maples, the big single maples, because those are your better trees. So we leave those to grow. But for us, Mike cut this 30 years ago. He didn't cut it heavy and he doesn't remember a whole lot about it. And he always, we giggle about it because I lose track of time and I've only been doing this for nine years. And so I lose track of jobs and what we did. So 30, another 20 years and I'll be all confused at what I did when, when we did what. But he, did, he didn't get all the big plump maple. So that's why we were cutting a lot of that and uh, the ash. But he cut this 30 years ago. Same landowner, same people. Um, so that's kind of, I mean, we can cut jobs 30 years, no problem, with that chipper and chip it. And it's just fine. Some better ground where trees grow better, you can do it less. But that's really a loaded question on how, um, when it can be cut again. But like I said, Mike was in here 30 years ago and you could come in here and cut that oak and get the logs out of that right now. They're not like really great logs, but you could come in here in another 10 years and cut this, cut them bigger trees out of there. And then you could come in here 20 years after that and cut all this small maple and popple that's left growing. So it's just kind of a hard question to answer because it can go so many different ways. But that's how this job is. Um, it's, that's the whole thing about um, whether you're watching me or Cotton Top or Logger Wade or Alex out west. We're all doing something different. Um, that's why I enjoy YouTube because we're all in the wood industry, loggers, whatever you want to say, heavy equipment operators, but we're all doing something totally different. And that's why it's hard to explain stuff because what we do isn't necessarily what everybody else does. And it all depends on your mills. I had somebody ask the other day why we don't tree length wood and haul it out of here. Um, the mills won't take it. So if the mills don't take it, that's not how you do it. And it's just, just because of where we're at. And down south, they're tree length and a bunch of stuff. And that's cool. But that's not how the mills want the wood up here. So they want an eight foot length, um, all their pulp wood. So you just kind of do what your area is all about and like I said that's why I love it because I love watching all the other stuff and whether it's Buck and Billy Ray doing his thing or anybody doing their their thing in the woods I just love it because it's cool to watch other people just doing different stuff with their trees you know so and I get a lot of questions on uh, why do we have so many axles under our trailers? Why do you got all them tires underneath there? It's all about the weight. Uh, the more weight we haul, you have to have more axles to spread the weight out. So, I get a lot of questions about that. And I'll take you up here. Will just pulled in. And I'll show you his axles on that chip van and how that works for our weight issue because he had some 43 ton loads maybe a couple weeks ago and it's all different um, this job here he's getting 36 tons a load 
But to take that truck down the road, loaded, you got to have more axles on the ground because you're hauling that much more weight. So, we're allowed 164,000 in the state of Michigan. And we try to get every stick on we can, every chip in there we can, to get the most weight. So, let's go up here. We'll look at Will's chip ban. Just answer just a couple quick questions. But Mike cut this 30 years ago. And I've chipped wood. Some small popple got cut. I chipped that up. It's a uh, 30 year old wood, man. Yeah. I'll eat that stuff up all day long. I don't care. There ain't nothing wrong with that. So, that's how it goes. You got like that patch there. There's just patches all over. Why don't you look out through there? 30 years, that'll all be nice stuff. So, we'll just pull the night to get back to work, you know? Ah, nice 10 foot maple there. Well, let's go up this chip in here. We'll talk some axles. We're getting another one built. I wish I could go videotape that one getting built. That'd be cool. So see these back two axles aren't on the ground? Then you got three on the ground. And then you got two that aren't on the ground. Okay. We call the ones that are up in the air lift axles because you can lift them up. We try to keep it simple out here in the woods. But see that airbag if he hits a button that airbag fills up with air and pushes these tires right pushes that whole axle right down on the ground along with all the other four lift axles and what that does is you only use that when you're loaded um, because you want to disperse that weight throughout all your axles because if you only had say these three axles with a loaded chip band it's not good on the roads to have that much weight on just three axles, especially when you're turn, especially when you're going down the road. It's just so they want them. They want you more axles, then you can haul more weight. But so we got lift axles. When he comes back from the mill, they never touch the ground. Them things are up. Once he gets loaded and on a straight path, then he can drop them. If he goes to turn, say at a stop sign, pop them back up turn drop them again but yeah it's just it's just how we do it up here in the wonderful state of Michigan but see how they got all them airbags once those air up it pushes that axle right down and uh, that's just what we do and then you got your push bumper in the back these trailers don't have walking floors they all get dumped I don't got a video of that. I'd like to get a video of it. But it's over two hours to the mill, so hard to chip and ride the truck to the mill to get video at the same time. So you kind of, you know. But that'll back up. The chip van backs up, stops, gets dumped. That's what holds it all. So that's why we got these bumpers. That's nice to have to hook a cable on to pull it back. Um, yeah, that's just how we run them, man. Them, all them holes in the top, because they get dumped. If you didn't have air vents, it would turn. It suck the roof right down in these chip bands. If you didn't have no airspace and the chips come out the back, it would actually suck the roof down. Never seen one. I've uh, heard of it. Heard of people. I know people who have seen it, and it's it's not pretty. So. That's just answering a couple questions on what I've had lately. Get those answered for you guys, and it's always easier. It's, it's hard, it's difficult sometimes to answer them in the comment section when you can see something. A lot easier. So just keep asking me questions, and I'll keep trying to explain the best I can. I'm not too smart, guys, okay? There's a lot of people out there a lot smarter than me. I'm just, I'm just that chipper guy. I just get told to run this thing and put some chips out. That's all I do. E-move. E-move. 